So, you think you were clear and concise with your point, but were you? I am your poetic haiku host, Kim B. Miller, the first African-American poet laureate for Prince William County, Manassas, and Manassas Park, Virginia, award-winning spoken word poet, facilitator, speaker, teaching artist, author. Let's get into today's subject. Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good Sunday. And I decided to do once a month this year in 2024. I got a lot of stuff coming up and I want to make sure I keep doing my podcast because I enjoy it. But um, so that's why it'll be once a month in 2024. Also, in 2024, I have a lot of things coming up. So keep an eye out on my website and let's get into the subject. And for those of you who don't know, this podcast is 17 minutes because I'm a lover of haiku. And <laughs> I don't know why every time I say it. Anyway, haiku. And because I do, I think that, you know, 17 minutes is plenty of time to say what I need to say. So let's get into it. So you're communicating your point in a way that you have an underlying point, concern, Uh, opinion that you're trying to get across. And you think your intent is what is delivered, but only your point may be the only thing delivered. That's how misconceptions happen. I know you're like, what What are you talking about? What do you mean? Example A, you are trying to show your friend some concern. So you're trying to show concern. And you say something like, wow, I know you're really trying to cut back and that the, the high fructose con whatever syrup in that particular drink isn't really helpful for you. I've been drinking this and it's been really great for me. If you're interested in more information, I'd be happy to provide it for you. Now, your intent may be concern, but what your friend may hear and interpret what you said to be is intrusive, know-it-all-ism, and budinskyism. And, oh, look at me. I made it successful. You can do but you're doing the thing very wrong. If you do it the way I'm doing it, you'd be so successful. Now, does that mean that was your intent? No, but that's what they received. We have start, got to start communicating that and realizing, before we even get to communicating, that our intent may not be what is received. And if you think you have made the perfect sentence scenario explanation for your intent and the person keeps getting upset, misunderstood, irate, feeling belittled, then your intent is not being communicated in what you are saying. So rather than keep saying the same things and hope your intent somehow shines through to the other person, change what you're saying in a way that the other person can hear you and understand your true intent. Instead, what most of us do is keep repeating what we said because we know what our intent is and the other person should too, and you don't understand why they're taking it the wrong way. I know that was a lot. So let me slow down and break that down. If you intend to say something kind and the other person takes it a different way, then they took it not necessarily the way you meant it, but the way they received it. And for you to argue with them and say, that's not what I said. That's not what I meant. You're always trying to find a way to change what I said. No, everybody has filters that they 
they filter the what it's called filters that they filter information through because of where they lived, their environment, that how they were as children. All these things help make us who we are. So I'm a native New Yorker, born in Brooklyn, spent most of my life in Long Island. So being a native New Yorker, certain things when people would approach me because of how you not we we are a friendly group in New York, but you know, we have certain things that we allow and certain things we don't allow. So how you approach someone, say, from New York, as opposed to someone from Virginia, which is where I currently reside, is different. A New Yorker may want a certain amount of personal space, and they will interpret you walking too close to them in a certain amount of speed into their personal space as you wanting maybe to start something, not giving them a personal space. Why are you so close to me? Whereas a Virginia may be like, wow, this person is really friendly. So a filter a New Yorker has is going to be different from a filter of a Virginian based on where they lived and what they were used to. Then you put more stuff on that, how I grew up, how the person grew up, how were they with their siblings, how were they with their mates, their exes, their jobs, all these things create filters for us. And with those filters, the information you give us goes through each one of them. And then we decide if you're being genuine. So your genuineness is not necessarily based on you alone. It's based on our filters and what we've gone through in life. And if you just sit there going, well, I said what I said, and you're just purposely misunderstanding me. Every time I say something, you purposely misunderstand. Nobody's purpose. Now, there are some people, let me be honest. Okay. There are some people purposely misunderstanding. <laughs> I'm not going to say it's not true. But what I'm saying in general is if a lot of people misunderstand you, it may not be that you're being mean spirited. But they have different filters. And do you have to fill out everybody's figure? I'm not supposed to figure out everybody's filter and know what to say and what not to say. You don't have to figure out everybody's filters. And a lot of times people don't even know they're using them. But what you do need to do is realize when someone tells you, I'm not getting what you're saying, or I got a totally different take on what you just told me, that I need to change what I'm saying so they can ad- identify with what I'm talking about. Not double down and talking about, well, you're just being ridiculous. You're just being ignorant. Or you just don't want to learn. Google is free and blah, blah, blah. No. Understanding is free too. Caring about somebody else's interpretation of your words is free too. Understanding that everybody's not going to get you. And sometimes you can rephrase things better is free too. Everything is not somebody else's fault. And some of y'all have never heard that. Because, well, if they misunderstood me, that's their problem. No, it's a you problem, too. Maybe that was the first person who was brave enough to tell you. I, I'm just saying. Some people will, a lot of people just don't get you. And this was the first person who was kind enough to tell you. You say kind enough? What are you, insane? I didn't ask them. But they gave you an opportunity to grow and learn and your communication skills, and instead you took it as an attack. You, you just don't listen good enough. I explained it well. I'm a good explainer. No one's ever said anything that I'm not a good explainer. Maybe no one felt comfortable. Maybe you're not open to that critique. Maybe someone told you, but you erased it because you know you're good at what you do. I think you're that. Your intent matters to you. If it's not received to the other person, your intent is irrelevant. I'm going to say that again. If you don't communicate your intent properly, that's a you problem. It's not a them problem. As the saying goes, the call is coming from inside the house. Answer it. Communication is a skill. We all need to fine tune it. There's no one and done on communicating. If every time you talk to one particular person, they misunderstand you, they have gone through some things. Meet them where they're at as opposed to standing on your sense of righteousness and you got this and blah, blah, blah. Meet them where they're at. How about having a dialogue of, here's what I was intending for you to hear from what what I said. I thought I was voicing concern, but it sounds like you don't hear concern in my voice. So I'm curious to hear what you got from what I just told you. 
then they have the opportunity to say, oh, you thought you were showing concern? Really? All I got from that was you're not good enough. Now, you may be like, the other person who is starting the communication may be like, you thought I said you weren't good enough? Where did you get that? I had no intention of saying that. I had no intention of trying to make you feel that way. And that's where intention versus communication goes wrong. We think if our intention is good and we came up with this scenario in our head and we communicated that, we're done. <laughs> oh, good. No. How is it interpreted? Your intention is one thing. But what was received? And it can't always be the other person's fault. Maybe you're not the great communicator you think you are. Or maybe you're a great communicator, but you need to tailor it to the people who you're speaking to. Because we all have different life situations we've been with. So you may talk to one person and they'd be like, you know what? I totally get where you're coming from and I appreciate it. And you talk to another person and they're like, you are way, way way off. I have no clue where you thought that was going to be helpful or anything. This is an absolute no for me. It's an absolute no. This is ridiculous. Pause. Be open to hearing another point of view about something you thought you were clear, concise, excellent at explaining. Pause. Be open to ask Use some reflective listening. Did you, would you mind summarizing what you think I was saying to you so that you can get feedback? And then please, 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 please. If someone tells you the truth about your communication, this is not the time to get in your feelings and get stubborn and get, it's just you-ish. <laughs> yes. Poeting, making up words. It's just you ish. Is this a you problem? When you start to break down and redo your communication, your skill set and communicating grows and your miscommunications go down because you're open to hearing to see if you're communicating with that person in a way that's beneficial to them. There's no point in having these constant communications with people if they're going to always misconstrue what you're saying. Now, again, I'm, I'm going to say there's some people, I don't care how you make it, how many times you have a conversation with them, they're going to misconstrue this. The sun is blue. Are you calling me blind? I didn't say anything about you. I just said the sun was blue. So there's going to be people who constantly, they just misconstrue for a living. That's their PhD. They got their PhD and misunderstanding and dag nabbit, they're going to hold it. They're not giving up that degree. So once you find those people, they are who they are. But I'm talking about people in general and how you're communicating with people in general. Because I run into so many people and mediate for people sometimes when they're like, well, I meant this. But that's not, another person goes, well, that's not what you said. And they're like, that's absolutely what I said. You just purposely, and then it just goes right back into that circle where everybody's arguing their point because their intent, what they know in their heart they meant to start the conversation with is what they're standing on as opposed to what is received. And some people you can try to help, but they have to be willing to help themselves. If you want those communicators, you have to be help. You have to be willing to help yourself. I could. I can help you help you, but I can't help you if you won't help yourself, I'm going to be one. Haiku. I can help you help you, but I can't help you if you won't help yourself. You can't drag people to understanding you, but you can make sure that you're clear. You can make sure that you're open to opinions. And for some of you who are so determined to put yourself in a category of great communicator, and you may be in certain subjects, but not in everything. There's nothing wrong with saying, with you, when you and I talk, 
I'm going to change how we respond to each other to start off with, here is my intent. That way, the person, before you even start talking about whatever, you know, paragraphs, saying, whatever you've come up with, you've let them know off the top, my intent is to talk to you about how worried I am about you. And then you go into what you're saying. So now they have a flavor before you even start serving the dish of what you plan the flavor to be. So now when I hear you talk, okay, okay, I get where you come from. So then at the end of whatever you're saying, you can say, did my intent come through? Because it's really important to me that it did. Totally different change, totally different conversation, totally different issues that can be resolved because you start up in front, front. You started at the start. See what happens when you do stuff live. You started at the beginning with your intent. And then you went into what you were going to talk about. So that they can preface whatever you're about to say was they're trying to convey sorrow, hurt, pain, concern, whatever it is you're the emotion you was trying to portray. And then after they can tell you if they received that based on what you said. Sometimes just knowing what the intent is up front will help people walk on the path you're trying to get them on. So change how you communicate so that you can be heard differently. Say what your intent is up front and then understand that no matter how you phrase it, there's gonna be someone who's born to misunderstand you. They're never going to try but that doesn't mean you're not an effective communicator. Know the difference, talk better, be clearer, don't hate.